Hello, friends. Hello. Happy Saturday. Today is uh, Saturday, May 16th, 2020. Um, if you're watching this on the YouTube, then you're watching it not in real time. It is a previously recorded video from... Saturday, May 16th, 2020, from 2.05 to 3.05 p.m. How is everyone's Saturday going? This is good. Um, it's like this weird, muggy situation happening outside. I'm not sure. Um, and, um, yeah. So, um... Yeah, other than that, that's really, it's all I got, really. Um, happy wedding anniversary, Lynn 8999. It is also Kia and Nathan's wedding anniversary today, so it is a good day to get married, apparently. I would know I'm not married, but, you know, people but I, that I know have become married. Sandra, I'm so glad you got your package today. Um, however, today is going to be really interesting because, so the last, so I am, I am not a, hello, Jill in Iowa. Um, I am not a girly girl, girly girl. Um, like, I don't wear makeup, I don't, like, do any of that stuff, and, um, and I, however, I, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, however, the two, there are two things, two things that I do for myself, for self-care, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that is get my hair done and get my nails done. And as, just like everyone else, I have not been able to do either of those things since March. It's now May. So, things are looking rough. Okay. However, I've prided myself on the fact that, like, for the most part, I've been able to, like, you know, keep my back here. I just, like, cut it down when it gets too long, and then just, I'm like, whatever, it'll grow out, and it'll be fine. Well, then last night, this happened. <laughs> so that's just that's just not a good look really generally so um and I was actually talking to Liz about this earlier is that you know you don't realize how much your hands show when, until you start making a floss tube and you're like wow my nails look rough um and so since tomorrow is Sunday aka floss tube day um, I'm going to, I just searched online for like how to safely take off gel nails and, um, all you need is like nail polish remover and cotton balls and tin foil. So yeah, I'm going to be taking care of that today. So, um, I'm just going to take them off all of them and then <laughs> yes, Tony, Tony said there'll be French tips soon. Yes, so th <laughs> that's why I told Barbara. Barbara was like, your nails are looking rough. Hold your judgment, Barbara. But anyway, and I was like, yeah, they'll just grow out, and then they'll be like little tiny, like, um, like red tips. But, nah, nah, nah. So, that should be interesting. It's been a long, 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 long time. Since I have not had anything on my nails, but we had um we had a viewer um take uh send me a package or, or two um of color street nails and so I'm gonna try that um I um. The only thing that I, like, I want to try them. I'm, like, excited about trying them. Um, but when I can go back to my nail salon, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to my nail salon. <laughs> okay, I miss them. I'm sure they miss me, too. So, 
Um, I, I don't, I want to make sure that if I do the color street, that it's not going to be a problem when I go back and get my gel manicure again. Does that make sense? Um, and yes, Tony, uh, Tony said, just wrap up the surface with an emery board. That's what they said in the YouTube video I found. So, so I'm happy about that because I just like typed into Goog. I said, um, how to remove gel nails from home and got a really fantastic YouTube video, believe it or not. So, um, I'm just going to do that. I will not be attempting to cut my own hair. Okay. That will not be happening. That will not be happening at all. So, um, what we're going to do today, um, is <clears throat> I still have, <clears throat> and thank you all so much for your compliments. You're so sweet. Um, um, I have some questions left from the confessions of a cross stitcher tag that, um, we have been kind of working through in the last few lives. And I found that it's gotten like, starts a really great conversation and I really love that. And even if we get through th three questions, I still think it's really fun to just talk and hear what you guys have to say and all of that kind of thing. Um, so, um, so that's where we're going to start with now. So, um, okay. And I'm just kind of like skipping over a lot, like skipping through some of them and picking out ones I think will be fun to talk about. So, like and some of them are just kind of like dumb. <laughs> I mean, whoever made this tag, amen to you. But some of them are like, have you ever shown your work? I mean, yeah. I have a foster channel. And like in the day of social media, I feel like just about everyone that is on social media or that's even going to watch this has probably shown your work in some way, shape, or form. So, um, okay. Let's see. Um, Okay. Um, okay, this, these ones are good. Okay. So, and I want to hear what your guys' answers are to them, too, so then we can have a conversation and we can see how people are different, and, and I think that's fun. So, um, this is question eight, and it says, framed FFOs, and if you don't know what FFO means, it means fully finished objects, or other types of finishes. So, like, how do you feel about other types of finishes? So for me, and for some reason, I feel like, I, I know I get this from Pam, and I, and, um, I think that it's kind of, I don't hear a lot of other people saying this, but maybe it's old school, I don't know, but I strongly, strongly prefer framed items over other things. So like if it's in yes, Katie depends on the size. So if it's small and like supposed to be a small and like it's a seasonal pillow or whatever, whatever, um, then yeah, that's totally cool. Um, but I, even small things I like framed, you know? So I, and, and I know that it totally depends on the piece and, and all that and like, you know, whatever, but, um, I know there are some people out there who just don't like framing and to me, it's worth every penny and, you know, people are like, oh, it's not an heirloom piece or whatever. And I'm like, every piece that I work on, I spent time, energy, effort, money, all the things into it and yeah, that's no, it's getting framed. So, um, I mean, yes, you are correct. Ornaments should be ornaments and things like that. Like Biscornus should be Biscornus. Like I get that, but, um, yeah, that's just how I feel about it. I really like, I love 
picking out frames. I like hanging things up on the wall. I like doing all the things. So, yeah. Um, I'm not big on, I'm not big on like putting stuff on stuff. Does that make sense? Like just mounting it on random stuff. It just doesn't do anything for me. Because, truth be told, I don't really have a whole heck of a lot of, like, counter space for that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I can, I'd rather put it up on the wall away from, like, a tabletop or whatever because cats, but I like framing. I mean, more power to you if you're one of those creative people that just, like, can think of stuff and just know that you're going to put it on something. And Barbara is one of those people. Barbara can go to the antique store or Goodwill or whatever and she'll bring back this thing. She'll be like, let's put a cross stitch on this. And I'm like, I would never look at that and think you could put a cross stitch on it, but okay. I see you. Um, so it's just interesting. So, um, But I know that framing is more expensive and so that <laughs> that's a big reason why we have such a large under-the-bed box. Is because a lot of those pieces we want framed. And it's just, um, but we also want to eat. So we can't just take the whole box to the shop, you know what I'm saying? So, um, okay, let me go back and read some answers. Um, okay. A lot of you are like, depends on the piece, depends on, which I totally agree. Um, and I do like pillows and like when you have a finisher like Jan, who is just so impeccable and like her work is just so top notch, then that kind of stuff doesn't bother me at all. So, um, like we have like stand ups and that's fine and, and, um, like pillows, like there's nothing like a Jan Calver pillow. Like it's like, it's amazing. And, Again, worth every penny. So, um, <laughs> I also don't have like a lot of receptacles for those things. So, like, we just have like, and I just keep looking up at our mantle and stuff. And so, we have a couple stand ups. We have one, two, three, four, five, seven pillows, all cross stitch. And we have one flat fold. Uh, and one flat pole. And it's great, but it's packed, you know. So, um, so yeah. That's just how I feel about it. Okay. Um, I loved framed in pillows. Um, a lot of you like framing too. That's so awesome. I love that. Um. And Roseanne, I'm with you. She says, Roseanne says, I've always framed all my treasures. I feel my work deserves the cost of framing. I'm with you. Um, and yeah, maybe that's part of my, I'm not a frou-frou person. So maybe that's why. But, um, and Lori, I agree with you. I think that, at the end of the day, I want my stitching to stand out because I've worked so hard on it. And so I don't want anything, whatever that is, whether it's framing or anything else, to take away from the stitching. And that, to me, is what's important. And I want that to be highlighted. So whether it's framing or anything else, I want that to be the focus, if that makes sense. Stitchy Aardvark has two under-the-bed boxes. Yes, you are an overachiever. Ours is just very large as well. Um, um, okay. Yes, and we have pieces in the bathroom as well. But those are obviously under glass. And here's a little teaser for you. <laughs> um, on, what day did you go up there? Tuesday? Yeah, on Tuesday... Pam went up to Craft Gallery and picked up eight of our finished framed pieces. So, we will be showing those in all of their beautiful framed glory. Ooh, I almost just said gloriness. 
Not a word. Um, in all their framed glory in tomorrow's boss tube. I'm very excited about it. So, um, yeah. So it's going to be really fun. I'm excited. Um, cause usually I would go up with her to get them, but, um, in episode, yeah, it's episode 149, I think. Um, and yeah, I bet a little birdie told you, Tony, <laughs> to her and Pam and your sister, um, Pam and Tony's sister, Beth, cause Beth, um, lives up there and had a nice chat. So yes, eight. So it's going to be super fun. Um, and I highly, highly, and I'll say this tomorrow in our floss tube. I highly recommend craft gallery framing. So it's just impeccable. And she uses this like amazing glass. That's like super, super lightweight. It's, but yeah, anyway, we'll talk about it tomorrow. It's great. Um, so the long and short of it is that the pieces in, on the wall behind us will be changing. And it's really fun for me because, like, I mean, this one's mine. That one's mine. That's Pam's. That's Pam's. This was a gift. Um. So, but this is super rare that I have two pieces on this wall. Just because I've only been sitting for three years. So, now, I got pieces back from the framer, and I get to put them up on our seasonal wall, and I'm so excited. So, I love that. Okay. Okay, where did I go? There, I'm trying to find the question. Okay. <clears throat> All right, next question. Sandra, you said, oh my lord, y'all don't have teenagers. No, we do not have teenagers at this house. Definitely not. Um, okay. So, okay. What is the most amount of whips you've had at one time? Um, I always think that my whip count is higher than it really is. I always think that I have like 80 whips and then I count them and I only have like 40. So for whatever weird reason, that feel, I feel like that gives me license to start more things. Um, but Katie... <laughs> Katie's whip counts at 81. Or that's the most you've ever had at one time, I guess I should say. That's crazy. I think, so I think the most I've ever had at one time was like 48. 48. And so, so Suzanne says, oh my, I have so many. I don't even want to count. Girl, I feel that. I, I never, ever, ever want to count them. Ever. But then it gets so disorganized that I'm like, whatever, I have to organize it. So. Katie, how did I forget that? Katie started at 93. And Linda, you haven't been stitching for for too long, have you? So seven is good. Um, and 30. Um, and Stitchy Aardvark, I, she said seven and it increases my anxiety. Believe me, when I look over at my box of whips, I'm like, oh man. Even just the four pieces that I've worked on in Mania so far, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, just finish the dang things. Just finish the dang things. Leslie. Leslie Deachin. Guess how many whips she has. Or the, uh, uh, not how many she has, but the highest at one time. 153. Pam just gave you the thumbs up, Leslie. Yes. <laughs> and what I've noticed in myself recently in the last maybe maybe six or so months I'd say um, is that I um, 
Um, I like to pull something out and then I will work on it until it's done. And I never, I wasn't that way the first year, year or two that I was stitching. I would switch projects like every day. I'm like, I just want to start something new, I start something new, I start something new, I start something new. Um, and so then I just started doing that. And that's kind of how my whips, my whip count got as high as it did. Um, but now I'm like, it's so much work to put it out, take it out and put it away, take it out and put it away. So I'm, I don't know what you call that, but I more or less am just like, I want to just get it done. Like, so I pulled out that, um, like even like, <coughs> even my banana pants party that I pulled out for mania. First of all, why did I ever put that away? Um, uh, that's annoying. Um, and then second of all, now I had to put it away for mania and now I just want to pull it back out and finish it. Lori, are you serious? Lori just said, I just finished my whip. So now I have zero. What is that like to live in that kind of a world where you have zero whips? That's impressive. I, um, <laughs> and and uh, the the problem is is that like that's when I finally had to tell myself that there's two hobbies there's the collecting of the charts and um the stitching of the charts because well I can't stitch as fast as I um I can't stitch as fast as I purchase that's for sure and then um they're just they're all so pretty. They're just also, I can't, I, I want them in my stash. Okay, Katie, I'll finish it as soon as me is over. And then yesterday, um, I don't know if you guys saw my Instagram post, but I started, um, the Sewn in Friendship was as a gift for Kia and we're stitching it for each other and whatever, whatever. And they're going to be shop models that keep six for a while. Anyway, and I started that yesterday and it's on 40 count with one thread and I have not stitched on 40 count in a minute. Because I've been working on whips. And I don't want to put it away. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to put it away. So then I, then I get to the question of like, why am I forcing myself? But, like, why am I forcing myself to put something away if I'm really feeling it? But then also, like... I have some projects that I need to force myself to finish. It's very confusing. I get in my head a lot about things. Um, Ada Stitches, she said, I used to work on one project, but while Steve explode, um, exploded, I'm assuming, she said, explodes my whip pile. I'm assuming that you meant made your whip pile big. And, but at the, at the end of the day, I keep trying to tell myself that crochet shouldn't be stressful. Like, this is a hobby, right? So, like, stitch what makes me happy. And, but here's the conundrum. The, con the conundrum becomes, it would make me very happy to see some of these old whips done. But also it would make me very happy to keep stitching on a new start. So which one, what do I do? What, what, what do I do? Um, Stitchy Aardvark, you're welcome. She said, I never thought about them as two hobbies. I feel much better about my purchases. It's the only way to think about them, to make to feel good about your purchases. <laughs> um, very quickly, very very quickly after, um, so we started making philosophy videos in May of 2017. And by the fall of 2017, we were like, yep, two hobbies, okay. Because we were going to retreats and we were doing these things and it was like, we would buy stuff, obviously not at the rate we could stitch it, and we were just like, you know what? But we bought the stuff as because a we liked it, but b when we when we pick it up, we can say, oh, we bought that here, we bought that there. So at the end of the day, I feel very strongly that which makes me happier: 
buying the cross stitch or wishing I'd bought the cross stitch. Buy the cross stitch. Just buy the cross stitch. There are worse things in life that you can spend your money on than a cross stitch. Take it from me. Um. Sandra says that she has 25 samplers go going. Why? Because they all make you happy. That's why. Um, and so Funkarella5 said, I stopped quit forcing myself following a plan or rotation. I'm a much happier stitcher. And yes, I agree. Um, Pam and I are very different in that way in that like, she really thrives off of a plan. Like the whip go board is really working for her. And like, you know, I think it was last year when she was like doing the wheel every week and spinning and like getting some serious progress done on projects. And it really worked for her. And that, and I tried to do a rotation. I tried to do structure, but it just doesn't work for me. Um, I just, I want to sit down what I like, what I like. And that's that. Um, and I don't want to be forced into something because then it feels like it's not a hobby anymore. But that's just how I feel about it. Um, okay. Yes, uh, Ada Stitches, I would for real. I want to be an octopus because I want eight arms and I want to be able to stitch four projects at one time. I feel like I'd have more finishes that way. Um, See, but Penny, see if I, if I, if I, the thing about the switching every hour is like, then I got to take it out and put it away. Take it out and put it away. Cause I, I had this whole like setup situation. Ridiculous. Like to me, that sounds like a lot of work, but, but I like the idea. Maybe I could do like one, one week on one week off. And, okay, so Tony, she said, I actually don't completely enjoy the process of kidding up new starts. I love kidding up new starts. That's like, because I can't start them yet until October, right? Because of the whole whistle stop with a good challenge that we're doing. And, but let me just tell you that kidding projects up, getting floss and fabric for them in anticipation of starting them in October like, I'm living for that. Like, I live for that. It's amazing. It's amazing. But I know that there are people that don't like the kidding up press part of it. So, um, and, okay, I'm sorry, I'm reading the comments. Um, Um, so Gla <clears throat> glass quilt says, I'm with you on that. I started whip go and just felt stressed. I'm a rebel and like to be in charge of myself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, I like that because like, I like that whip go and that, that kind of thing works for Pam. Cause I know that she gets stressed out about her whips and she wants to have them finished. And she's like, I got a lot of stuff. I got a lot of stuff to stitch, whatever, whatever. Um, and so I feel that. So I'm glad that it works for her, for sure. But for me, no. like, whatever. I'm young. It's like you're telling myself. How long do I get to get away with the I'm young? Um, okay. <laughs> I love the kidding up part and picking a new project bag. I also do enjoy the project bag part of it, obviously. Obviously, I like the project bag part about it. Huh. So Speets214 said that she has an upstairs stitch, a downstairs stitch, and a kitchen stitch. I try to do a little each day. Fascinating. I didn't know people had that. I have one stitchy spot, so therefore I have, I have one one stitch. 
<laughs> Lots of whips, but only one stitch. That's interesting. I really like that. That's actually a really cool idea. And yes, I agree. Uh, Mamma Mia Marie. That's really fun to say. Mamma Mia Marie. Um, kidding is exciting. I agree. And yes, Katie, I am jonesing for a new start as well. So, um, but I think I know what I'm going to have in two weeks. We get to have a new start. Uh, we, we had planned that we were going to have a StitchCon start, um, but then, of course, StitchCon was canceled. And so, or, yeah, canceled. So, um, but we're still awarding ourselves with the start. So, um, hello, Janet Jabber. How are you? Um, she said, I love the idea of kidding, but stress about making changes that I want to do, but do not feel confident in doing that. Yes, I have, I've gotten better at it now, thankfully, but, um, it's taken me a long time to like, so on banana pants party, ironically enough, I went through and changed, not changed the colors, but she called for a lot of Victoria motto threads that I didn't have, obviously. And so I just went based off the picture and into my stash and found some threads that I think looked good. Um, but then I didn't write it down. So getting better at keeping track of like the changes that I make. Um, and my advice to you, Janet, is that if you like it, just remember that it's going in your home. I mean, unless of course it's a gift, then obviously it's different. But if you're stitching it for yourself, for your own home, if you like it, go for it. And we are always our own worst critics. And that's just like a life rule. So if you think that it looks good, chances are it probably does. And chances are probably somebody else is going to like it too. So, um, so I said, just go for it. I said, just go for it. Um, and like there was, um, someone that I saw today who had, there's a chart that I love that I've purchased and, I'm obsessed with it. I really want to start it. I'm very excited for it. More on that later. Um, and then I saw someone today that did a complete color conversion on it. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> it's beautiful. So now I'm like, well, what do I do now? What do I do now? So um, I, I think most of us, at least because like, I just think this is general human behavior, I think is to be like, I don't know if that's good enough or not. And again, if you like it, go for it. Um, and, um, so Roseanne says, I envy your ability to be on top of your kidding up. I'm content to let the shop do it. Um, yeah, I mean, if you contact a brick and mortar shop like keepsakes, for example, and you speak to a human and, you know, whether it be me or Barbara or Susan or Lenny or whatever, and you could just ask for it to be kitted up and make substitutions if necessary, then that's fantastic. Um, if I'm just shopping for threads, I do it, um, with, a, with online shops. So there's no human to human interaction. And so I just have to make my own calls that way. So if they're out of a thread, then if I, if I want to kit something up and I want to buy the threads and I want to spread the love to an online shop, I'll do that. If they're out of a color, then it's immediately go to keepsakes and ask Susan or like go to the wall and figure it out myself. Um, so it's one of those, I've been taught that by working at keepsakes that it's okay to change things and to be confident about that. So, um, but that's what chops are there to do. You know what I mean? Like we're there to do that for you if you don't want to do it. So, um, and that's something that you get from brick and mortar that you don't necessarily get from an online shop. So, um, I want to read. Okay. 
Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So Funkarella5 says, instead of reading at night, I'll take a chart or kid it up project to bed to plan my attack. I'm weird. I don't know. No, I'm obsessed with that. So every Sunday for the last three weeks, maybe, um, during this whole stay-at-home time, um, because at the end of the day, obviously, my loyalties lie with keepsakes, and I do spend a lot of money at keepsakes, but um, there are other wonderful brick-and-mortars um, that I love and want to support and give some love to at this time. So every Sunday, I have gone through my projects that I'm going to start in October, and I've gone and purchased threads, and I love I love doing that. Like I love like sitting down at the computer and like going. To, it, it's ridiculous. So we all have our weird quirks. It's fine. Um. And Karen says that she has that she loves to kid up. She has about seventy five projects ready to go. I mean that's that's really what what it's all about, right? It's like needing to have all these projects fully kitted. I th- I have. As many projects as I have as whips, I have probably the same, if not more, fully kitted. Because I'm just that ridiculous. Um, sorry, I'm reading these. Um, okay, so Linda says that she has a back room, craft, and patio stitch areas. You used to have kids just, but never sat at my table, so that went away. Yeah, we don't sit at our kitchen table either. And, Katie, you are correct. It's a little out of balance when you have multiple hobbies, so I need balance. Amen to that. I don't know what I would do if I had, if I was like a quilter or a punch needler or a, any other hobby or it would be bad. It would all be bad. And, uh, stitch time. Absolutely not. I mean, okay, I don't want to... So she asked, so stores don't mind kidding up for stitchers, question mark, gathering all the threads, etc. I don't want to speak for other shops, but I know that Keepsakes is more than happy to get stuff up for you. We'd be happy to do that. Um, We have no problem whatsoever. Um, We do tend to ask, like, how flexible are you? So, like, if we're out of a color, are you okay with it being substituted? And, like, we have some people who are like, no, I want the colorful colors, which is totally fine. I get that. I'm a purist in that sense, too. Um, And then, but we have some people who are like, whatever, I trust you. Um, And then we have some people who are like, just send me whatever you have, and then I'll see what I have in my own stash at home for what, whatever. Um, But, yeah, I mean... (sighs) Thankfully, thanks to the internet, um, most people, most charts and their supply lists are available online. So even if you were to call and say, I want to order this chart and get it kitted up, people do that all the time. So we are happy, happy to do that. Um, or people have called and they'd say, so I have this chart at home and I would like the supplies for it. Like the, you know, I want to kit it up, but it's a chart that has like, 15 or 16 colors and and it's just it's easier for me at least to be like I can look up the thread list it's fine and I can easily do that no problem at all so yeah long story short and I know um I know that I don't want to say that it's not a problem for all shops but I think that you'd be hard pressed to find a shop that would be upset with you if you just said, I want to, I want to have this kitted up. Like, yeah. So we're happy to do that always. Anything to lower your stress level. Um, and, um, so mom, me and Marie 528, um, she said they don't mind usually charge a small fee. Keepsakes, at least Keepsakes does not charge a fee to get something up for you. You're already paying a fee by buying the supplies. So, um, I hope shops aren't doing that. That's not, I don't like that idea. Um, uh, 
Yeah, that's how I feel so, Suzanne. She said, um, interesting, I've never heard of shops charging a fee. I think that'd be part of the business. And, and yeah, that that's, that's how we feel about it. Like, um, there was a really interesting conversation at the retailers meeting at market this year. Um, and there seemed to be some shops and, and to be completely fair, I don't know what shop they or who they were representing. I didn't know them personally, but you know, that were overly frustrated when a designer would call for a fabric or a thread that they can't, that they're having a hard time getting. And they were like, well, what are we supposed to do if we can't get the supplies? And I'm, I'm like, literally, I'm just like, that's not a problem for us. Not because we can get everything, but because it's part of our job to make substitutions. It's part of our job to help you kit it up. It's part of our job to make sure that you're happy about your stitch, you know? So like, I mean, I'm just going to say it that like general arts is had, it's going to be a while until people can get general arts at a steady rate again. So shops, including keepsakes have had to adjust to that and we have no problem doing that because it's part of our job. So, um, and that's part of what the customer service part of working in a shop means. And it's something that you don't get from an online shop and you can get that. I mean, you can ask people who have shopped with through keepsakes um, that don't live in Cincinnati that I would be very hopeful and I'd also be very confident that they would tell you that we happily work with you and we'll communicate with you and we will make sure that your needs are met 100%. So, cause it's not about us. It's about you. It's your stitch going to hang in your home. Um, so, and Yes, yeah, sign up for the Mayflower. I'm so excited about that one. The women of the, coming to America with a needle and thread. Um, so Mama Mia Marie. That's so fun to say. Um, so ironically enough, um, so Pam, so she says, Pam is definitely going to be doing it, isn't she? The Mayflower. Um, so here's the thing. So Pam's already doing a May, women of the Mayflower stitch and I mean, she likes the women of the Mayflower that coming to America, but it's not screaming at her to like, stitch me, stitch me, stitch me. Um, however, it is doing that to me. So I know that I'm going to be stitching it for sure. Um, Pam's a little bit on the fence, but she already has women of the Mayflower started anyway for this year. So, but that doesn't happen until later this year. So we still have time to decide. Um, <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, I don't know why I apologize. Yeah, I know that you guys know I'm reading the comments, but um, and Janae, I was, I didn't want to like call somebody out, but I was going to say like I'm really really good friends with Julie McConnell, and I know that she does exactly the same thing that Keepsakes does, so um. She will be happy to kit something up for you. She'll help you change colors. She will go above and beyond in the same way that Keepsakes will, tries to do. So, um, And yes, Funkarella5 said, I work at my friend's shop when she needs extra help. We all love kidding projects. Downfall enabling. Uh, yeah. 100%. I had to kit something up for... Um, for somebody, and it was a chart, I don't remember what chart it was, but they wanted the needlepoint silk for it. I mean, I've worked at the shop for almost two years now, and like, how many times have I passed the wall of needlepoint silk? A thousand. But it wasn't until I put the actual needlepoint silks in someone's project that I was like, man, these are beautiful. So then I kitted up three projects with needlepoint silk. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and yes, Winona, you are correct. Winona said, let's face it, if you ask for it to be kitted up, they're making more money. That's part of awesome customer service. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
Oh, I'm so glad, Sandra. Um, oh, thank you. You're very sweet. Um, and yeah, that's, that's a big thing too. Like, um, is fabric is that a lot of the time the fabric shown isn't true to what it shows. So let you guys do the best to match because it's usually better. And that's the thing is that like the picture doesn't, and a lot of, especially with like hand dyed fabrics and things, um, it's just easier to find something that's similar or whatever. Um, so yeah. So, Kathy Walker, let let me explain a little bit about how uh, coming to America works. I know that oh, I know that some shops have posted things, but I'm way better at verbalizing it than I am typing it out because I'm long winded. Um, so, short answer. So, this is what Kathy said. So, Kathy said, "Since I am an Ada Stitcher, do you think they will release just the Women of the Mayflower pattern without it being a kit?" And the short answer is absolutely hundred percent yes. So, um. What the shops will receive from Brenda Gervais with a needle and thread is that they will receive the charts for coming to America and a slew of extra goodies. Um, it will all be in a box. Um, and then if you, so if you sign up for coming to America, you will at the very least get the box with the chart. And then there's a bonus chart and finishing materials for the bonus chart. Um, but what is not included in that box of materials is fabric or floss of any kind. Like, to stitch with. So, it is up to shops to kit it. However, there are different strokes for different folks, right? So, um, it is called for to be done on 40 count vintage country mocha. It is like 400 and 32 by like 187 I think I don't know but anyway it's way longer than it is wider as I'm sure you know if you've seen the photos and on 40 count fabric we're giving people a fat quarter because it's cheaper than if we were to cut it down to size so I think the total of what you need is like 27 by 13 I think and that's on 40 count with a three inch allowance. And a fat quarter is 27, 18 by 27. So it's, and it would be, it's cheaper for you as a stitcher to just get it as a fat quarter. And that's on 40 count. So if you do it on 14 count ADA, it's going to be much longer, larger than that. Um, like, I don't think it's going to be like a fat half size or whatever, but it's, it's going to be larger than that is what I can tell you. So the long story short is that, um, every person that signs up for it through keepsakes is that at, at some point, I believe it's the middle of June. I'm not sure I have it all information at the shop. I'm just going off what I think uh, off the top of my head, but, um, after we have, gotten signups and gotten signups and gotten signups whenever someone whenever someone signs up we ask them what count fabric they prefer to stitch it on that doesn't mean that you have to get fabric but vintage country mocha is made in a lot of different um counts and stuff so anyway so then after we submit our numbers to brenda and telling her how many boxes we would like then we will start getting in contact with Everyone that has signed up and we, we can say, what are you looking for? Are you looking for, just, like, do you want everything? Do you want the whole nine yards? Do you want fabric, floss, everything? Or do you just want the fabric in the chart? Do you want just the floss in the chart? Do you, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it can totally be customized to what you want, what your needs are, all the things. Um, but I can tell you, I'm fairly confident in saying this, that just the box with the chart, the instructions, the bonus chart, the finishing materials for the bonus chart, all that retails around about 35. So if, so I don't, I have, I haven't seen the thread list yet. I'm assuming it's quite a few. Um, a fat quarter of fabric is $30 before tax and whatever. Um, so it's already $65 
without getting the floss. So it's probably going to be about a $100 project to fully kit. That's what I'm assuming. I do know <clears throat> I do know that there's some DMC and there's some overrides in it. So <clears throat> so that way I, like there seems to be a lot of talk of it coming as a kit and I just want people to understand that it's not we're not getting it from Brenda as a kit. It's up to shops to kit it. So there's that. Okay. So I hope that that answers that question for you. Okay. Um, good morning, Maui. Um, M Mills 122883. She said, did you see the Plum Street 9 to stitch pattern? Is it going to be released to the public? Um, yes, I did see it. And yes, it will be released to the public, but it will, won't be released to the public for probably at least a year. At least a year. Um, I would recommend, I mean, you can always try calling Dine to Stitch and seeing if they have any extras, but that's typically how those exclusive kind of things go, is if it's an exclusive for a retreat or for a shop, then it's there for about um, a year or so, so. Um, and head dot Z quote. No, I have not, excuse me, given a top 10 tools list, but I will write. Them. Okay. Okay. We love you, Winona. Um, okay, sorry. Um, I'm reading. Oh, that's super cool, Nathan Grogan at zero two. So yeah, um, you're stitching the Plum Street side. So you're stitching the side that Kia's stitching for me. Um, and... Oh, I'm glad that I was able to help explain coming to America. And there was there's been a lot of information that's come out about it because people are like, I want information, I want information, I want information, and every shop is doing something different. In regards to, like, how they're offering it to people. So, like, I know that I've seen other shops and they're like, well, you have this option and this option and this option. And I'm like, that is too many options. I'm one of those people that gets easily, easily overwhelmed with too many options. And so I need to know, like, maybe three. So we have come up with, I think it's a total of four basic options. So... For coming to America through keepsakes. So you can get just the chart. Oh my nails look terrible. Just the chart. Chart and fabric. Chart and floss. Chart and fabric and floss. So that's simple to me. And so. Um, it's just way less overwhelming. Um, than some other different options. So um, I'm always happy that. Um to figure that out for you. So I'm glad I was able to help. Um, yeah, I have all the information at, um, at keep success to the dates and all of that. So, um, um, so it's middle of June, beginning of June. Um, I th I'm not sure exactly the date again. It's, I have all the information at keepsakes, but, um, you can sign up for coming to America. I would just do it maybe before June 1st. So, um, and when you sign up at Keep6, you don't need to pay us anything. The only thing that we ask is that if we order you one, you pay for it. Um, cause they are not reorderable and, um, we don't want to be stuck with a bunch of boxes that aren't going to sell. Um, because since it's not reorderable, we won't be doing a shop model of it. So, um, because it's not available, so uh, that's all we ask. So, yeah. Is it really safe to say I want the whole nine yards when talking about fabric? <laughs> Pippa, that was funny. That's hilarious. <coughs> um, and so Suzanne said, Dying to Stitch had a wait list for extras of the chart. So you can always get on that wait list. Whoever asked about the Plum Street one, there you go. Um, 
Okay. Melanie, she said, do you know a site I can go to print a conversion chart, like telling me what size to cut my fabric for whatever we may be stitching on? I don't know how to do that. I don't like wasting fabric. Okay. So, uh, Yarn Tree has an exceptional fabric calculator app. Uh, not app, but site. Um, so if you were to just like, this is how I do the math for when I cut fabric at the shop for customers and myself is I have, I just type into Googs, Google, I just type in cross stitch fabric calculator and it's the first one that comes up and it's yarn tree and it works great. Um, so you type in the stitch count, you type in the count of fabric that you have, um, the number of threads you're going over. If it's Ada, it's usually one. If it's linen or even weave, it's usually two. And then, um, uh, the amount for border, I always leave that border box empty and then, uh, around the edge for finishing. And I always put three and then calculate, and then it will tell you what the stitch size is going to be. And then it will tell you the size of fabric you need to cut. So that's yarn tree cross stitch fabric calculator. Uh, okay. Okay. Um. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, did I get to the bottom? Oh, I'm impressed. I didn't think I was going to get to the bottom of the comments. Uh, are you stitching the right way? I'm not sure if you're... Um. So, yeah, so, um, I think there is an app that you can download, like, for your smartphone that does it, but I'm just so used to doing it that way that I always just use the entry one. Okay, it's 305. So, um, fun conversation today. Um, I'm so glad that, um, that you guys are enjoying this. I hope that it's worth your time. I really do. Um. I I really enjoyed this conversation and just like talking about cross stitch. I'm always happy to answer questions. Um, I don't like to be sit here and be like I know all the things because I don't know all the things. But I know I'm always happy to answer questions. So if that's what this is, it's just like a Q and A kind of thing. I'm here. I'm here for that. So um, so yeah. So I hope that you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Um, tomorrow, remember, um, is no live because it is Floss Soup Day. And then uh, I am going back to work on Monday, Tuesday. I mean, I've been working Monday, Tuesday for a while. but um, So the next time we have a live, it will be Wednesday. So I will see you all next Wednesday. Um, and... If you've missed any of this, it will be up on YouTube here shortly. Um, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I love you. Bye.